Good early afternoon and welcome to Audio Tree Live. Today is Tuesday, March 23rd, 2016, and we're honored to have with us Bruns. Some sunny day I'll be home again. Some sunny day I'll be yours. And I'll never worry, not ever again. I'll see you some sunny day. Yeah, I'll see. More than fences and barn stall doors. Then I saw you floating free as a pleasant in the Illinois wind. And I realized then I would never be the same again. Cause I know love can free us, no chain could ever keep us. And so if you wanna be alone tonight, well that's alright. Audio Tree Live. We're in the studio with Bruns. I love that when they needed the line check of everyone's individual vocals, you all sang at the same time. Everyone was like not leaving them hanging solo, you know? <laughs> it was like, all right, Alex, it's your turn. And then everyone would just pepper in their background vocals. It's nice. Nice to hear that. Thank you guys very much for coming out and hanging out with us, playing some music. Um, I'm curious. I saw a little photo on Facebook of you guys watching SNL like at a rehearsal. Are you big SNL fans or just casual SNL oh, fans? It's deep. Okay, cool. Yeah, oh, how yeah. long? I'm a huge SNL fan. As long fan. as I can remember. Okay, did your dad like show it to you or like your no, family? No, I, I just spent a lot of time in my room alone with the TV. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> just watching TV. Yeah, yeah, right. Uh, yeah. 
just kind of get drawn to stuff like that. Sure. Yeah. Others, your your yeah. you know I amount of love. Chris Farley was the first one. Okay. That, cool. Like, I bought that DVD. Oh, of his like best of. Yeah. Cool. And yeah. that was when I was like way into it. You know. Yeah. Yeah. And it's been good. This this season's been good too. Oh, this is a yeah. great cast. The Kyle Tom oh. and I love the Kyle Mooney Beck Bennett. Yeah. Yes. Ones and Ryan. They're like inside SoCal characters. Are yeah, so it's good. so funny. Yeah, we, and we text like clips to each other like great. on a daily basis. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, it's like pretty regular. Have you seen his Kyle's stuff that sort of got him known? His digital oh, stuff yeah. on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. outrageous fun. And all yeah, that he stuff. has such oh. a weird, like <laughs> such a weird vibe. It's like a natural progression from the uh, Andy Samberg sort of idea, but it's for now, you yes. know? It's yeah. just further. Yeah, oh, it's <laughs> so much further. What do you think <laughs> makes the cast unique currently? Because I agree. I think that they're they're so good right now. There's obviously a political element to it and politics. Yeah. Trump makes free yeah. humor. There's a lot going on in the world, you yeah. know, and that always makes the cast not better, but it, it draws more focus to what they're doing. Sure. Um, but it's just like a band. Like, yeah, it's basically the same chemistry that a band is looking for is what a comedy cast is looking for. I guess. Sure. So, yeah, yeah. it always it feels. Yeah, it's always like a couple years where it's a little iffy. When of the, course, you yeah. get really used to the cast, and then they leave, and then so I think they're getting they're hitting that stride again. Yeah, I agree. Because at the end of like the Kristen Wiig, Fred Armisen, Bill Hader, they were like really killing it. Oh yeah. And then they all left, and then there's that transition period. But like it between. Didn't last that long. No, it really didn't, especially like Taron Killam and Bobby Moynihan like really leveled up, you know, that side of things. And then they have such an incredible female cast and such an incredible African-American cast. And they're able to like play up race issues so well, you know. Yeah. It's a range. Yeah. It's a range. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Cool. Well, thanks again, guys, for coming out, sharing. You can roll into your next set when you're ready. <laughs>
You're watching Audio Tree Live. We're in the studio with Bruns. So I read uh, a quote on Facebook that said, there was like a photo of you, and it said, he's probably saying something like, I wrote it down, take the inversion of the two and a minor four with a suspended seven, and it'll sound good. Some joke, I suppose, a <laughs> music theory oh, joke or something Yeah, like that's that. about Tom. Okay, about Tom. <laughs> Tom is like, well, these guys all, I think everyone but me, like, can read music and study music and all that crap. <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, so a lot of times Tom will like come over and he'll sit at the piano and him and Alex will just talk for like 45 minutes about like, oh, well, if you play the seven over the four minor, it's going to make it sound like a major three or some, something insane that I don't understand. So you guys... End quote. <laughs> yeah, end quote. There it is. So when did, when did you first start like diving into theory to where you can talk about it in that way? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I went to a musical college, so okay. it's just kind of part of the requirements out there. Even being a drummer, you have to learn all that dumb stuff. So. Yeah, yeah. But it's, it turns out, like, it's part, partly useful, I think, is what we end up saying. Like, it's cool to have that part of music. It's yeah. sort of the mathematics of music, I guess I'd call it. Yeah. And uh, a little less of the creative side, I guess, of it, you know? Um, so it's nice to have both sides of that. I mean, it's fun for Alex and Ryan and Kyle and I to talk about, like, the math side of things, but... Uh, really, you got to connect with people, you know. So sure. Sometimes, you know, the seven over the four minor or whatever it isn't going to do that. You know? Yeah, yeah, right on. <laughs> How do you? Yeah, I mean, what's your perspective on that? Because you've expressed that you're not super interested, in it, or maybe that you're not interested, but that you just haven't committed to it. Yeah, I mean, I I love like songs that have like two chords. Okay. I'm like, oh, that song only has two chords. Cool. Um, but what I love about playing with these guys is that. I'm allowed to be like the not good musician in the band and then okay. they can like make everything sound way cooler. <laughs> you know what I mean? It makes it yeah. unique instead of like, like if I were to record everything myself, it, it would all just sound, it, it just wouldn't sound good. I, I don't have a good He's analogy, lying. But. He's great. <laughs> like, <laughs> okay, yeah. He's got to get more credit. Being humble, yeah. But you guys are the ones who are then, like you're saying, sort of analyzing it yeah, in that so mathematical way. There was way. a song on our last EP called On My Own and Tim, that was one of the first songs Tim and I worked on together okay, when cool. we started. And it was a simple three chord song. And we started rehearsing it once like we got Tom on board and uh, we re-harmonized everything. We rewrote all the chords, made it a lot more powerful. His because his lyrics, you know, require a certain amount of depth. Right. And it just wasn't happening with his three chords. Okay. So that is one example I think where it worked really well. Right. Yeah, yeah. And especially with I mean you guys are doing so much vocal harmony that there's gotta be some level of like equation to the that. The thing right? is he hears all that okay. without understanding it. Right. Mm -hmm. Tim hears all that. <laughs> that like He's dumb, but <laughs> he's not. He's know? dumb but he's talented. So that's his, We're that's just, his thing. And I, I refuse to understand Tim and his creative side because it makes it hard to communicate sometimes because i'm like just do that one do that one part that's like <laughs> it's like either the third or the fourth it might be the fifth you're like uh, it's one you, of the notes you're like yeah, yeah one yeah. of those notes yeah we had a <laughs> we had a band in the other day who was trying to tell a trumpet player he plays trumpet he was trying to tell a trumpet player what notes to play and he and he's like just uh two fingers down and uh play no higher no uh your lips have to be tight oh just give me it and like then he would play it and like okay just do that instead it is interesting that there's a a disconnect in the yeah. language there a little bit but yeah cool cool that it works out um you guys can roll into your next one when you're ready
that beauty I can chase down like a hawk until you know it's too late. Audio Tree Live. We're in the studio with Bruns. So, Tim, you were born and raised in Denver, thereabouts? Yeah. Okay, cool. And then others, uh, are you guys Nash- Nashvillians by by birth? We're all transplants, I guess you could say. Yeah. Okay, okay, cool. Uh, when when did you move, Tim? Two, two years ago or three years ago? Yeah, about ago? two. About two. Okay, yeah. cool. What's, what's the difference, and you guys can speak on this too, um, in terms of your... Maybe the influence of like songwriting in those two places. The, there's an obvious, um, I guess, geographical difference, but as far as maybe the culture of the cities goes or something yeah. like that. Musically, Denver was is a really great city for music. Right um, there's a lot of really cool stuff happening there. There, it's it's different than Nashville because Nashville is so it's such a song based town mm. that like everywhere you look, everyone's a great songwriter. They're all you know. Everyone in this band writes songs. I just don't let them sing anymore. <laughs> uh, no, um, but in Denver, it was more like there was a lot more unique stuff happening that was really cool. Okay. Like, and it was just smaller. So it's, you know, Nashville, everyone, everywhere you go. Is in a band. You know, your waiter, your barista, whoever is all going to be in a band mm-hmm. or doing something in music, you know, yeah. which is a great thing. Um, but it's also just, there's just a lot of it. So, yeah. Others on that are agreed. Agreed. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Agreed. It's big oversaturation for sure, which is good and bad. You know, it's bad because it's a lot of competition, a lot of pressure. But um, at the same time, you can find anything or any instrument or any player that you need. You know. Right. Do Do you find that it's the case that commitment is slightly hard? Like, are there people that are more interested in well, being just a guitarist for nine hundred bands versus well, being in one? Nashville, the commitment is a. Perf- to commit to a profession where you make a living. Right, okay, you okay. You know, the passion... Understood, yeah. It's, people play for passion other places. Right. You know, I would play for passion anywhere. I play for passion in Nashville. But, um, you know, people expect a little... What do you call it? Money. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. What's this in stuff? Uh, money, which yeah. Is, yeah. Which is understandable. Yeah. That's where you go to do that. So It's a big hired gun town for sure. I yeah. mean, I know some of us in this band, when we're, you know, when we're not doing run stuff, we're getting paid to play other games. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, and there are there are downsides and upsides to both, obviously, mm-hmm. because that allows you to 
perfect your instrument in some right. sense, but it also is hard to be split between those passions or so many different styles mm -hmm. or things like that. Yeah. Stylistically, I love the difference between different mm -hmm. bands. Okay. Um, it's, it's just different points of view. You'll run it, you'll play with people that have been hired guns their whole career and mm -hmm. they're later in their career and, and they're just kind of burned out. Mm -hmm. um, and you're just excited to have a gig and you show up smiling and they're just like, oh, we're only getting paid this much. Yeah. So there's stuff like that. And, but Nashville is a great town. Yeah. And, and a lot of cool, um, like, DIY venues, or is it a lot of, like, you know, I don't know, obviously paid venues. But is there any of that, like, underground element to it? Yeah. Bit. I mean, I think Nashville in general is sort of a DIY town. There's a okay. lot of people there doing a lot of random stuff. Like, just yesterday I saw some commercial for like a furniture store that's a national store, but they hire out a couple of local guys from Nashville that build the furniture that, Oh, because it's like, that's just, it's just like a unique place to create, you know? Cool. But. That's very cool. Sweet. Okay. Well, thanks for sharing. You guys can roll into your next one when you're ready. I just want to say that they have a, what's that festival in July? You wrote it on the sheet, but I forgot what it's called. Or that Bristol? show is it Bristol? Okay, okay. So uh, you can go to the website <laughs> to check that out. Yeah. But they have they have two shows coming up in Nashville, and uh, the self titled EP Bruns is still out. Get it. <laughs> Every line you ever loved from old movies. Every boy that really made you laugh I want to know where you began I want to hear you start again So start again Every hurt you felt so deep It just destroyed you Every joy that made you come back around I want to know what cut your soul
Audio Tree Live. We've been in the studio with Bruns. You can get their self-titled EP out now and look to the website for future tour dates and other news. Thank you guys very much for performing for us. Thank you. Thanks for, for having, having us. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks to awesome, amazing, handsome people in the studio, camera and lighting crew for hooking things up, and viewers, thanks for watching. You can support the band by downloading the session when it comes out in a couple of weeks and send a shot via social media to us or the band if you just want to connect. From all of us here at the Audio Tree Studios, thanks for tuning in. Goodbye.